Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here at Muddy Thumper. So the garage is kind of packed out here this evening. I'm going to be taking you guys along. I have this 503R. It's a, I think it's a Scandic or Safari 503R. Um, I'll find out the exact model. I don't have the bonus. <laughs> Actually, it might be down here. Let's find out. Does it have anything on it? VIN number. Doesn't include the model number. So I'm assuming that this is a Scandic, or it's a 503, it's the big engine anyways. It has reverse center, uh, electric start, um, nice heavy duty machine. I'm gonna be trying to get this running here for my father. He bought this a while ago. We're gonna try tackling this guys. If you're new to the channel and you like uh, watching videos on fixing random stuff, random equipment, um, ATVs, three wheelers, you name it, feel free to drop a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'm going to teach you guys how to fix this, and I'm going to figure out how to fix this myself. <laughs> I got no clue um, what's going on with this. As you can see, we got the front harness here. That's all removed. Um, spark plugs. I'm going to have to test compression. Put the carburetors back on it. I think if I had to remove the carburetors. Um, this is a huge, huge miss. Whoever worked on this, like the previous owner, um, I don't know what they got going on with electrical. But you can see like there's blocks everywhere um, a lot of this is spliced into this machine is going to be a wood hauling machine just for hauling logs and stuff Okay guys, so you can see there, she's pushing out about 125, 130 PSI on one cylinder and about 150 on the other. That's pretty high. That's a lot of compression. I'm thinking ideally you want 150 on both sides. Maybe a little bit of oil down in this one, she might come up to 150. But um, yeah, let's go ahead. I don't have a wire diagram printed out. I've got the throttle slides here. I'll move this out of the way. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the next day here. Um, back out the shed. I'm gonna be getting a new camera in the future so you guys will get some better footage and stuff like that uh, I'm hoping to get it fair rather soon But anyways, um, just wanted to show you guys I'm picking at this here uh, I, Keep in mind. I'm just getting this sled running to have a spark. Don't mind the fuel leaking I was just pulling it over not to worry about that. I'm gonna have to open a garage so I don't get too much fumes <laughs> It's not too good on the brain <laughs> but anyways, um I'm going to be simplifying this sled. This sled is only getting used for hauling wood. Other than that, it's uh, not getting really any work done to it. But I'm going to make this video. It might be helpful for someone that's trying to troubleshoot Spark. Or maybe you got an old beater sled. Just want to get it running. Similar to this. So you can see I have a um, couple wires down here. I'm pretty sure I figured it out. Um, one thing I was going to mention. It's rather hard to actually get a wiring diagram for these sleds. They're on, there are lots on the Google and on the images, they're rather blurry. So I found one, I'll drop it down below. Um, I'll try to put a link somehow for you guys where I found it to. So you can, uh, it's actually for a newer Scandic 500, but you'll see that the colors are the same. Ideally, when you're going at this Spark stuff, if you can print off a diagram, you're a step ahead of me. I don't have a printer, so I'm using my phone. Let's see if I can show you guys this. All right, you see the stator here? So coming off the stator, it says there's a little red white with a little uh, block there. That, that that basically means that's your pulsar coil. So that needs to that basically tells this ignition right here when to spark. Aside from that, we have a green lead, which I'm pretty sure green is the main ignition coil. And if you look over here, you see white, and you can see how white is tied down to ground. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to put white to ground. I'll have to double check it, see if it produces any voltage. But other than that, that should be pretty much it for the spark. Um, my light just died here. <laughs> I had to plug that back in. But anyways, guys, um, aside from that, you can see the only other wire. So you have white, green, red with white, and black with yellow. Black with yellow is how you kill the engine. You basically ground that out, kills the spark. Um, red and white is your pulsar. Green is one of your coils coming off for a spark side because you can see that side of the stator is all for the ignition coil the other side of the stator is all for your lights
So I'm only interested in the ignition coil for now to see if I can get this running. Okay guys, hopefully this is not too bad. I'm gonna plug that light in here now shortly. Um, all right, so all I wanna do, I wanna test the coils without dying here and see if I'm getting any voltage. So I got this, this is my Fluke multimeter. If you got a cheaper meter, it does the same thing. I'm putting it on AC. I'm gonna up the range on mine. Just put it in 600 volts. It's um, way too high, but um, I'm just doing it for testing purposes. I'll try to lay this here so you guys can see it as well. So I was just saying that green is one of the positive coils or one of the coils for spark and ignition. So I got my red probe in there on the green. I'll put this to ground. Let's see if the meter does anything. So it's reading about uh, 12 all the way up to like 20 volts. So that's telling me that that coil is working. Okay guys, I'm just doing some basic checks. I got the, the meter on continuity mode. Um, if I touch off the white coming off the stator and I touch her off ground, So the white is a ground, the green is a hot for the coil. Um, that little red and white is a pulsar that tells the engine when to make the spark. And if this one is engaged as well, this actually kills your spark. You see the little yellow and um, black that will kill your spark there. So I'm thinking that the stator is probably good on this. I'm gonna see if I have a spare ignition coil like this. This has like a CDI unit and all that stuff built into it. See if I can put that on. It's probably this unit I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and see if I have one here and uh, throw that on. So guys, this is a quick recap. Um, you need the green wire coming off uh, the stator. That's gonna be your main spark wire. You need the white to go to ground and then you need the red with like white there. That's your pulsar that tells the engine when to spark. So I went ahead, threw on a spare ignition coil off um, one of the skidoos out in the backyard. And you guys will see the next clip. This is what we got just by swapping out. Um, I had to fix up the wires a little bit and um, swapped out the ignition coil, which had the CDI unit built into it. Okay, guys, so just done some soldering. The garage door is closed. Everything is buttoned in. You guys can't see it because I'm in the dark. I got my spark tester here. Um, let's see if she lights up. I just got one plug. I'm gonna, I'll test the other plug as well, but um, let's see here now. I'm gonna pull her over Kill switch on Key on All right, I'll, I'll hold you guys here, but the camera might be a bit jerky. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know where my stand is to Oh yeah, we got lots of spark boys lots of spark Hey guys, don't mind the mess. I got the carbs cleaned. Didn't do a like over the top job. Just gave them a quick five, ten minute clean each one. I'm gonna go ahead and put this breeder box on. You can see one of the boots is basically destroyed. The other one's probably, yeah, look, you can see a hole. <laughs> Um, what I found online, because they're really hard to find now, I usually use these. Um, I think they're for a motorcycle. It says 570135800. Here's the part number here. I can look it up as well, and uh, if someone needs, but I just wanted to mention it because when I was looking for these boots, you can see it's like the breeder box has been melted at one point. Um, when I was looking for these boots, I couldn't find them actually. I had a lot, a lot of trouble trying to find these boots. I ended up finding the ones off Amazon for an ATV or a motorcycle and they're actually compatible. 
So I'm going to go ahead, throw these on, and uh, we'll throw this box in, throw the carbs on, and then we'll see if this works, actually, and see if this one's run. You can hear the bird in the background gone mad. <laughs> it's probably one of our last hottest days of the year, I'd say. Um, the rest of the week and next week is going to be cold right off. So, yeah, it's going to be me, the redneck out in the shed here now. Everyone's out in shorts, and I'm trying to get this skidoo going. <laughs> I'm not sure what year this sled is, maybe a 93 or something. All right, but um, I'll update you guys now shortly. Get these boots on, get the carbs in, and we'll see if it wants to run. Okay, guys, so in case you're wondering, I uh, you just used a screwdriver and popped those boots back into the airbox. Pushed it in here, and then now I got the carbs on. Pretty easy. Uh, when you go to put the slide down, you'll see that there's a little throttle control. Make sure that the point that's sticking in, I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Yeah, you see that little like, needle sticking in? That's your idle adjustment. Make sure it uh, lines up with this side. Because if you put that in 180 out, like say you put it in like this side to the right, which is wrong, what'll happen is that the skidoo might try to take off on you when you go to start it. Should be like open throttle. So make sure that the angle piece right here is lined up with the slot down there. So this is on the left, this will be on the left too. Really important. If you do it the opposite way, your skidoo might open up should be open throttle, basically be like a stuck open throttle, and that can be rather dangerous. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and um, put the these screw these down in place, pop them down in place. I'm not sure which is which. Ideally, you're supposed to know, but I never took the carbs off, so I don't know. Yeah, see how they just slots in? Yeah, just like that, nice and easy. Shouldn't be hard to go down. Went, went right the first time. Here it is. See how it wants to go down naturally. So I'm going to do that with the both of them. Screw them down nice and tight. Uh, tighten up my spark plugs. We'll see if she wants to run. And then it's just a matter of throwing the hood on. Plugging in a bunch of connectors. And all that stuff. I'll leave that to father to finish up. Um, I got the hood out there. Just a matter of bolting it. I don't have the, the bolts and stuff. So just a matter of bolting the hood on, plug in all the connectors for the lights, and then that's it. So yeah guys, when I'm ready to start her now, I'll try you guys in the stand and we'll see what happens. Hey guys so thanks for watching here on the channel you can see we got this skidoo brought back from the dead it was a 503r we bought um with no spark managed to get it up and running um as you can see she didn't want to move the primary um, clutch was stuck on her um father managed to actually free it up there because I, I brought it back to him he freed it up and um with a bit of oil penetrating oil few taps with a hammer and she is moving so the sled will be doing some work now the winter and um Gonna be hauling some logs with it and trying to get a cabin built for myself. So thanks for watching guys. See you again.